Good morning, everybody. I'm General Alubui Jara, Chief of Staff of the Malian Air Force, and um, I'd like first to express my gratitude uh, for the opportunity to be here and exchange with such a highly distinguished uh, group of, of professionals. I'd also like to thank the moderator for the question you asked, uh, Minister Diop, and giving me the lead for me to expand a bit on what he said. Um, after the high level of the remarks that we just heard from the panel, uh, for me to make any significant or important contribution, I, I thought that I should take it down to a lower level and uh, specifically address the uh, officers of, the, uh, of this distinguished uh, Command and Staff College of the Rwanda Defense Force. So I'll try to share my observations and uh, uh, my experience uh, from my time as the uh, Chief of Staff of the Malian Air Force during what is probably uh, one of the most crucial periods in the history of my country. You know, when I was myself a uh, uh, student at the uh, Senior Command and Staff College uh, in Nigeria uh, a while back, we had similar events where we were made to think about those issues in Africa, especially security issues, and try to think about solutions. And at that time, I was far from imagining that I would find myself so soon uh, in the middle of those kind of strategic decisions and uh, participate in what will determine the future of 20, 22 million uh, people. So I'll urge the uh, officers here to, um, to value the knowledge, the ideas, and the critical thinking skills that they are getting out of this, this school. My recent experience confirmed to me that war and national security issues in general is first and foremost an intellectual struggle. I can't speak here at the Command and Staff College without bringing my quotes uh, of famous strategic thinkers. It's a tradition in our military schools. So I'd say, first, know yourself and know your enemy. And in 1,000 battles, you will not know defeat. As soon as I said that. Also, we know that the most important duty of a leader when going to war is to first decide the nature of the war he's embarking on. What does that mean? War is above all a confrontation of wheels, of ideas, of minds, of intellect. And sadly, in Mali and most African countries, many African countries, I should say, we have long let others decide which issues we should tackle and how we should do it. By doing so, we were condemning ourselves to fight someone else's enemy. And unfortunately, most often, this enemy was ourselves. So we found ourselves fighting ourselves on behalf of somebody else because they gave us the ideas. They thought for us. In this country, Rwanda, is the perfect example of that, and Minister Diop, in his opening remarks, referred to it. So I think the, this problem, so for 10 years, my country was under occupation. On one side, it was occupied by a coalition of terrorist groups, and on the other side, it was occupied by a coalition of international forces who came in to help. And as we heard, outsourcing your national security issues is not the solution. In fact, it is the most painful path toward defeat. And this is what happened to us. And once you understand that, you know the power of narratives. We were made, as the minister just said, we were made to believe that we were too poor to sustain an army. And in the early 1990s, as you referred to the uh, early democratic experience that uh, our countries were embarked on, our political leaders 
were convinced that their enemy is in fact the military institution of their own country. So that's how, to answer your question, they quickly and methodically dismantled the military. We demilitarized the country. We <coughs> were confident that some external powers would, out of you know, generosity and love for us, come and protect us when we were going to have problems. It didn't turn out that way. And at the same time, of course, some other groups were being, would you believe that for a long time, the uniform we wore were outsourced from France, from French companies. The food we give our military, the uh, MREs, the combat rations, were outsourced. Someone said that the, an army uh, marches on its belly, well, actually, or, or on its stomach, uh, he said, he corrected. We were marching on someone else's food. How can you have a strong, effective military in that situation? So the first and foremost and most important decision that was made after the uh, change of uh, leadership in our country was to identify who's the real enemy of money. And we understood that it was not the poor farmer or the poor herder who was given arms and asked to leave his cattle behind and go die for a few dollars to feed his family. This guy is our brother. He is not our enemy. And he's fighting us because he was also made to believe that his enemy is the Malian state. So know your enemy, think for yourself, take charge of your own destiny. Changing the paradigm that the minister referred to in our country was not easy. It came with sanctions, with threats, with indirect use <coughs> of force actually against us, against the military, against the population. So deprived of external financial assistance, we had to rely on our own internal resources, which are very limited, but we knew that we didn't have any other solution. So we reinforced our defense institution. We acquired sophisticated equipment from uh, some countries have been cited here, from Russia, from uh, China, from Turkey. And by the way, I should say that those uh, Bayraktar, famous Bayraktar drones have made miracles for us, and they're not coming from the US or from France and they were not given to us. We bought them with our resources. So the 25% of the budget that goes to the military is lost for investments in uh, education, in agriculture, in the energy sector. We, currently, Mali is facing huge energy, uh, a huge energy crisis. So that money that goes in the military today is lost for all, of, all those other sectors, but it's a necessity, it's a fundamental prerequisites for us to be able to rebuild again those vital sectors. So in doing, in taking back control of our country, we did not use um, the colonial practices that are being taught, I'm sure, at this prestigious college, those uh, expedi expeditionary counterinsurgency techniques that we all learn at military schools. We drew from our own military history. We draw from the history of the Malian empires, how our ancestors built and run and sustained very effective administrations, huge empires that spanned the whole West Africa and the Sahel. And they did so for centuries before uh, the colonial penetration. We did so by leveraging our own cultural heritage, our customary and religious reconciliation mechanisms. We're trying to harness all of that and bring back our Malian and African authenticity in order to solve our own problems. We tried to use the legacy of the first ever human rights charter that was given to the world. That was the Kuruka Fuga Charter in the year 
1235. That's way before the Universal Declaration that people are using now against us and try to teach us what a human being is. So I'll end up with an advice that comes from one source of hope and optimism that I had while trying to uh, defend my country during this uh, particular period. And I'll ask the um, officers here to network among themselves. You know, military diplomacy during the political escalation that we recently had with ECOWAS, with all the tensions that were building up and the threats of war against Mali, against Burkina Faso, against Niger. We are preparing ourselves to fight the war if ordered to, but also we were engaging with our counterparts in all those countries. I was talking to most of the Air Force chiefs in all the ECOWAS countries, and we shared ideas, and we discussed, and we knew that we had to give our most honest professional advice to our political leaders and let them know what are the, uh, the um, challenges, what are the potential impacts of all the decisions that were being made but we remain sure that if ordered, we would, we would do it. So, competition. Okay, General, I'm going to have to stop okay. you. I'm, so I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. so that's the, that's the end of what I'm saying, actually. So that's the uh, advice. Please don't hesitate to, um, to share among yourselves, to network with your brothers who are here. They are very bright, and you are going to solve together the, some of the most wicked problems in Africa in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much.